Hello and welcome once again to Bible Class Topics. Today we continue our study of turning points in the life of Christ. And this is the need for Christ, man's fall, part two of two, lesson one. You can see from our outline that we will conclude our discussion of the fall of man uh, in this particular video, and then we'll begin talking about the seven turning points in the life of Christ, including his birth, his baptism, his temptation, his transfiguration, his crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension. And we'll conclude this study in Lesson 9 by a discussion of man's redemption. In the previous video, we talked about the fact that the need for Christ is man's fall because sin separates man from God. In this video, we will discuss the other two points that we want to make. One, sin causes man to be ignorant of God, and secondly, sin causes man to be unlike God. Three things we want to discuss under the topic of sin causes man to be ignorant of God, man's capacity for the knowledge of God. We want to talk about that. We want to talk about the fact that this capacity disappeared and in its place idols took over for the place that deserves to be held only by the one true God. Before we say a word or two about man's capacity for the knowledge of God, let's talk about this. Man sinned because he thought that God was withholding knowledge that was rightly his. In his attempt to transgress the God-given limitations and attain this knowledge, man stunted the growth of his intelligence. And three questions come to mind, which we said we will discuss. What was man's original capacity for the knowledge of God? What became of this capacity when man fell? And how did the fall lead to idolatry? In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, we see a phrase that says, The life was the light of man. I want to read those verses so you can hear that phrase in its, where it belongs. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So this light, or this capacity, was given to no other living animal or plant only to man. This ability to know God was available in the beginning to mankind, but lost to him in the fall. We can see in the New Testament that the ability to know God is restored through his word. And his word, as we can tell from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, his word is Christ. Our capacity to love is a direct result of knowing God. In 1 John 4 and verse 19, John said, We love because he first loved us. That is, proper knowledge of God leads to the ability to truly love. True love, then, is an undegraded emotion that guides our will to appropriate action. The only way to have completely free will is to be insane. Otherwise, there must be some governing principle behind our decision-making processes. Some authority commands our will. The unfallen man looks to the love of God and submits to God's will as his standard of authority. Meanwhile, we see after the fall of man that man's capacity for the knowledge of God disappeared. By allowing his own will to preempt the will of God, man's intelligence is diminished. When great minds of science try to explain this universe without God, they only develop more questions than they do have answers. Well, where did these false gods then come from? All men tend to worship something, if nothing more than their own intelligence. 
If they choose to reject God, they replace him with something else. Something or someone fills the void. In creating an idol or a god of his own, man has only one place to look to the pattern, and that is his own create of his creation, and that is his own self. In Hosea chapter 13 and verse 2, the prophet said, And now they sin more and more and make for themselves metal images, idols skillfully made, skillfully made of their silver, all of them the work of craftsmen. It is said of them, those who offer human sacrifice kiss calves. The Old Testament emphasizes three false gods of man's imagination, Baal, Moloch, and Mammon. Those that worship Baal deified nature and thus ultimately leading to a worship of the most marvelous fact of nature, which if we know is reproduction. So free love, temple prostitution, other forms of sexual expression in the name of religion will not be far behind if someone chooses a, an idol such as Baal for their worship. Meanwhile, Moloch represented the antithesis of love, and that's namely hate. And featured in the worship of Moloch are human sacrifices, especially those of children, which of course is the terminal act of cruelty. Mammon, we all understand, is money possessions. Matthew 6 and verse 24, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or God and money. The worship of wealth and the power that wealth brings, that is what these people who worship mammon worship. Everything due God is given over to the search for and possession of wealth and power including power over other men. In Baal, we have worship of an imperfect knowledge. In Moloch, we have the worship of a prostituted emotion. And in Mammon, we have the adoration of a degraded will. In each case, man's idolatry is based on lust and not love. In his own ignorance, man calls out for a messiah, he calls for the true light. He calls for the one true God. Let's turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 17 and read a few verses beginning with verse 22. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus in Athens, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you're very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. Nor is he served by human hands as though he need anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having been determined allotted periods in the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring." The third part of our study, the second part of this video, is sin causes man to be unlike God. A man is always like his God. In Psalm 115, verses 4 through 8, the psalmist says, Their idols are silver and gold, they're the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel. Feet, but they do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them, 
so do all who trust in them. When man creates his own God, the gulf between man and the true God widens even more, as we have already read in Hosea 13 and verse 2. Paul told the Ephesians in chapter 2, verse 12, Remember that you were at the same time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So this first lesson of our study, the last video and this second video in this first lesson, ends with the following points. First, we're going to talk about separation causes man to be unlike God. Second, in what way is fallen man unlike God? And finally, we'll finish up our lesson, how is this situation... Uh, how this situation demands the coming of Christ as its only solution because fallen man is out of harmony with God. Let's talk about alienation from God. We've already said alienation from God equals loss of spiritual life. Spiritual death occurs when man is separated from God. The good news is, since the spirit is not perishable, this separation does not have to be permanent. When a man cannot see God in nature or on the face of a newborn child, then that man's spirit is truly unconscious. A man who does not know God cannot truly know himself. Without God, the union of body and spirit that makes us healthy, both mentally and spiritually, breaks down. The result discord between man and himself. How then is, uh, how is fallen man unlike God? If unfallen man was more akin to God spiritually and the outward manifestation of his physical body reflected this, when man did fall, he fell spiritually and then he deteriorated physically as well. Think of the most intelligent people that have ever lived, and yet their minds do not hold a candle to God's mind. How can man compare his intellect to God? Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, what? God created the heavens and the earth, or Job 26 and verse 7, he, that is God, stretches out the north over the void and hangs the earth on nothing. So intellectually, man does not compare to God. Emotionally, man is unlike God. Apart from God, man becomes selfish. Matthew 5, 46, during the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus preached, For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Even evil men can love those that love them. God's love is selfless. Man's love, apart from God, does not compare at all to God's love. Man's will is entirely unlike God's. Man desires mastery of all he sees and imagines, while God has man's best interest always at the forefront of his will. When man lost his sense of spiritual beauty, then the attractiveness of the flesh was sought out as a poor replacement. Fallen man is out of harmony with God in every respect. First of all, his character is at variance with God. His conduct is antagonistic towards God, and his personality is depraved compared to God. As such, man is of no use to God. There is no logical reason in, in man's mind why God should even salvage man. Our logic would tell God to cast man aside and either forget it or start over with a new series of man. However, within the nature of God lies a reason for man to have a chance at redemption. And as we know from the Apostle John, God is love. Three closing thoughts in the lesson will be yours. First, God is not bound to do anything for man. And by sinning, man forfeited his claim upon God. But, thank God that God is love. 
If he had been anything else, man would have already been lost forever. Finally, Jesus Christ came to earth to follow a road of pain and suffering so that man might be rejoined with God, and in doing so, fulfill the reason God created man, thus satisfying God's purpose, and that purpose is love. Thank you for studying with me today. I hope that you can glean something from these studies concerning the turning points in the life of Christ. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, it would be a great help if you would. Also ring the notification bell so that you won't miss any of the new lessons as they're published. If you would like or dislike this video, that would also be a big help to me. And a comment uh, would be nice, especially a positive comment. But any comment would be met with my scrutiny if you would at least place one here. In the meantime, and until we meet again, may God bless.